Hi guys, my name is Ben Guilford. I'm the owner of The Fire Brick Company. And in this video, we take you through how to build the walls of your wood-fired oven stand. Right, we've got our foundations down. We know the stand that we're gonna be building. And we've got our layout diagram showing us the location of the blocks, the site, all the dimensions. Uh, and so now we're gonna set it out on the floor. We're actually gonna draw it onto the foundation so that when we come to lay the blocks, we're just following the lines that we've drawn on the floor. So print off uh, the pages for your uh, stand layout that you're gonna use and then mark it out on the floor. So we're ready to lay out our Versalock blocks and get them in position. Now remember guys, Versalocks are not the only way of doing this. You're more than welcome to use cinder blocks or besser blocks. You can even use ordinary bricks. Uh, feel free to use our layouts to give you all the dimensions that you need. We like using the Versalock blocks because they're really simple, they're easy to use, they're actually relatively inexpensive, uh, and they are bulletproof. Uh, they're, just, they're just a great product. Okay, so this is the range of the 150 series Versalock blocks. Uh, so again, the 150 refers to the width of the block. Uh, they do make 200s, I think they even make 90s, but the 150s are really good and stable and perfect for building our wood-fired ovens on. First one is your straight block. It's open at both ends. Uh, this is what most of the stand is made up of. Then we have our two corner units. Uh, so you have a right hand and a left hand, or a left hand and a right hand, depending on which way you look at them. Trust me, you'll know which one to use when you get to that particular corner. But these are your corner units, and they've actually got a section here, uh, which locks into uh, the block. Let's say we have this block here and we wanted to do a corner, bring that in and these lock in like that. You get a nice continuous corner here. All right, so those are our two corners. Then we have our end units. So we have a full end, looks very much like a straight block, but it's closed at one end here. And we have a half end. Uh, now, all of these are shown in our plans that you can download from the website, as I keep saying. Uh, so yeah, please go through those and you'll see which blocks to use where. So now, we're gonna start laying them out. Something you might find when you're laying Versalock blocks, if your foundations aren't laser flat, like completely billiard table flat, then you may find occasionally you get a block that rocks a little bit. Uh, and Versal so Adbri have thought of that. Again, I don't have shares in Adbri, I know I sound like I do. Um, they provide you with these little, tiny little wedges that you can use. So you can just level them up, make them stop rocking. Uh, so you'll see, you'll see me using those. So now, hey, that's rock solid. Most of them are gonna go down perfectly and you'll find no rocking at all. Occasionally, you might find a little bit of uh, aggregate sitting on top, so it's worth just brushing them off and making sure that uh, there's nothing on top to get in your way. Something you might have noticed is that I haven't bothered putting in any starter bars into the ground uh, to lock into these cores. And that's because I'm not worried at all about this oven moving laterally on this foundation. I'm not worried about that at all. Uh, we've got a five ton structure sitting on top of this foundation. It's not gonna move sideways. Uh, so if you, if you do want to, by all means, when you do your foundation, uh, you can put starter bars in if, you, if that's something you're concerned about. It's never been something that I've been particularly worried about uh, because of the size of the structure and how rigid it all is. It's not, we're not building a very high wall. We're only going up a few courses. So it doesn't necessarily need to be pinned into the foundations. So using these blocks is actually very satisfying. It's very easy. It's like giant grown up Lego. Um, one of the things that I did want to mention is uh, don't worry too much if they're not perfect. If you've got little steps in, you know, where the, the, they don't line up you know, perfectly flush because most of the time you don't leave these exposed anyway. You're gonna cover it with render or stone or something to get rid of that uh, surface, to hide that surface. Mm -hmm. 
You're gonna notice in all of the layout drawings that we have on our website for the block work that we tend to blank off the back section. Uh, so right here we have uh, our first our four rows of blocks which are forming up the outside walls. Uh, and technically you could leave it like this. Pour your concrete slab on top, uh, so it's gonna be heavily reinforced. Concrete can easily span this kind of distance with the right reinforcing. Uh, so we don't need it there for structural reasons. The reason, the reason that we have it there is because I don't like spiders. Uh, think about this, you built your stand, right? And you didn't put a wall in the back. Uh, and so you've got, you know, maybe you've got a cubic meter of firewood delivered or a couple of cubic meters of firewood and you think, right, I've got a perfect place to put it. I'll just pack it into this, into this area. And so you crawl on your hands and knees and you feed the wood all the way into the back and you fill the whole cavity with firewood. Later on, so you'll start using the firewood from the front and it comes time to start getting the firewood out of the back. You're gonna be crawling on your hands and knees into a dark cavity full of spiders and snakes and other things. Maybe it's not that bad. I don't like spiders, all right? So I recommend putting a wall across here, which still gives you heaps of room for firewood, plenty of room to store firewood, uh, without the spider issue. Okay, so the concrete has arrived and it's time to fill the cores. So remember, Versalock blocks, they're not mortared down. There's nothing holding them together until we fill the cores with concrete uh, and then we're gonna take a steel Rio bar and we're gonna put that into every second or third core just to strengthen it up. To be honest, this is gonna be stronger than your house. This will be a bomb shelter by the time we're done with it. All right, so our friendly neighborhood mini mix concreter is here. I don't want to keep him waiting any longer. Uh, so we're going to start pouring. Now the best way to do this, wheelbarrows and plastic flexible tubs. And just get your uh, mixer just to dose out half a tub at a time so that you can lift it and pour it into the cores with the bucket like you're about to see us do. So they might look like they're full, but remember, concrete wants to be vibrated. Okay, so we use the bars to vibrate the mix. Ask your, your, your driver just to wet up the mix so it flows nicely into the cores. I'm putting in a reinforcing bar every two or three cores just to lock all the bolts together. So you poke them in, give them a little wiggle at the end. Now you notice I've cut the bars deliberately to be about 50 mil or two inches above the height of the blocks. So that means that the slab we're gonna pour on top it's actually gonna tie in to this layer. So this is the thing I love about the plastic tubs is they form a natural spout. Uh, when you, if you leave, leave them open, it opens up and you can tighten it up. It just makes them much easier to use than a shovel. And they are cheap at your local hardware store. Got all our cores full of concrete. Obviously, it looks a little bit of a mess. Don't worry too much about that. Remember, all of this concrete is gonna be covered by another slab of concrete. So it's not the end of the world. It's a little bit rough on the top here. In fact, it's virtually impossible to get it looking very neat at all. And it really doesn't make uh, the, the finished product any better if you clean this all up. It's not really gonna help you. But one thing that will help is clean the edges. Make sure you've got nothing hanging over these faces, any, all of the faces, because you're going to be attaching formwork to the sides and that needs to be hard against that surface. Now, the other thing I want to point out to you is, and you have to do this while you have the opportunity, often when you're pouring these blocks, they'll move, right? Don't assume that they've all stayed in the same position. Uh, for example, I just looked down and this block is actually pivoted this way. So, I'll just bring that back in. Here a little. There we go. Now, 
Again, I'm going to render this surface anyway. I'm going to cover this with something. You're not going to see it. So it's not the end of the world if it does have some imperfections. But I've seen it before where blocks have properly moved. Uh, you know, you might have bumped it while you were pouring the, the concrete in. So just go around, do a check. Uh, you can use a trowel to knock them in or a, a mallet or something like that. Don't use a normal hammer because you tend to break the blocks. So before the concrete sets, make sure you get down, pick up any bits that have spilled. If you're pouring near a deck or near something that you love, uh, maybe a structure, maybe timber or something, cover it with plastic before you even start. That way any, any slop you might slip and accidentally pour some concrete, often it splashes, like you see it's all fallen all over the floor here. Uh, and if this was say timber decking for example, it's going to stain it.